Welcome to our Christmas Sabbath. Sabbath, a gift Jesus gave to us. This Christmas, don't leave him, Jesus, off your gift list. You won't find it on Amazon. You'll have to shop your own heart. I'm not gonna talk anymore. <clears throat> Joy to the world, let's stand and sing. expected Jesus, born to set thy people free, from our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. Oh, to say. 
complain about having no voice because God is always faithful.
offering, Christmas offering. Well, it's certainly my pleasure today to welcome you all here to a uh, special pre-Christmas service. You know, what? this reminds me so much of Christmas just looking out there because I'm seeing a lot of faces I haven't seen for a long time. 
and it's so nice to see you. It's so nice to uh, be just like a, a family, in the sense we're seeing a lot of family people that we don't always see. It's great to have you here, and I hope that today as you worship with us in song, as we've already done, and we'll do a little bit more of that later, because singing is really a, an act of worship, isn't it? The angels did that right back in the beginning. And um, we'll have an opportunity to do that a little bit later today as well, as also having some, some special items, uh, which will be great to be able to do. And I'd like to welcome all those online too that are either watching now or watch later. I hope you gain a blessing from the singing and the words that are said uh, as we remember a, the fact that Christ came as a babe to rescue us and to redeem us. And that's what Christmas is all about, isn't it? I know as a kid I used to struggle a bit with Christmas because it was always a little bit before that we'd go to graduation and uh, graduation they always had the Messiah. Now, now I, I actually appreciate it for what it was, but as a little kid you kind of thought, no, oh, it's just dragging on and on. You'd look at the watch and you'd think, oh, come on, surely they can say that quicker. <laughs> but um, when you actually realise that this is the Bible put to music. Um, yes, they do string it out a bit some, in some places, but yeah, look, it, it is fantastic stuff. And, and I was just thinking, you know, you can't have this time of year without uh, Isaiah 9, verse 6, right? As we remember in, um, in the Messiahs, for us, a child is born and unto us a son is given. And the governance will be upon his shoulders and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Now I understand why he stopped there because it kind of flows really nicely. But verse seven is, I think, adds that little bit of extra. It says, for the increase of his governance and peace, there will be no end. So it adds that little bit of extra dimension, doesn't it? And upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, in order to establish it with his judgment and justice. And justice is something that we all would want and, and need because this world is there's not a lot of justice is there and the zeal of the lord of the hosts will perform this so it's always nice to read that extra verse sometimes get that little bit of context it gives us that hope the fact that it's something that's not going to end and the fact that it will go on forever and his order is going to be established so as we worship today enjoy the singing enjoy the special items uh, that are brought to you and uh, once again, we're just so thankful that you can hear, be here with us, and we hope that you really enjoy worshipping with us. Another part of worship too is, is giving, and Christmas is a great time for giving. Uh, this time our local offering is actually for the needy, which is a very appropriate thing to do. And look, if you're thinking of giving and you're running out of gifts, there's always ADRA, there's so many different things that you can give to these days. And you can always do it the last minute too now. It's even easier because if you can't give here today, you can give online. And if you haven't come prepared, there's always the online bit, so that's great. So if you just like to bow your heads, we'll just have a prayer to uh, over the offering that's be used wisely and, and is blessed. Dear Lord, we'd like to thank you so much for what you've given us. We're reminded every day of some of the blessings, particularly where we live. Um, we don't have a list trouble and strife that is often in a lot of part of the world. We pray that as we uh, remember others and we give, that you will multiply this because we are showing your love to others as we do it. We know that um, it will be used wisely. We know that you'll multiply it. And may others get to know and see your love through the gifts of others. We ask this all in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen.
voices for singing today. <laughs> Happy Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. 
Emmanuel. This is a new song that we've been learning. You may know it, you may not, but we're going to sing together.
Hello. Uh, <clears throat> we <laughs> we are elder group. Uh, we started uh, playing guitar from this year. So it has been uh, one year, but we practice one hour every two weeks, about one hour, 30 minutes to one hour. So that's here we are. And <laughs> don't expect uh, too much because we are beginners. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we did uh, two times, and this is going to be our third time. And now we're going to sing Korean song, which you might not understand. Uh, it's, it's called Silo Arm. Do you know what Shiloa means? So, okay. Shiloa is, uh, okay, we are told that Shiloa is the nail of Jerusalem. Our Lord is the one who can open the eyes of the blind with just a word. Nevertheless, when Jesus tells them to go to the pool of Shiloa to wash, he does, uh, he does so for a very important reason. Our Lord is the one sent, and implication is that going to the sent one, which is Shiloam, will open the eyes of the spirit. So we're thankful to have Jesus to forgive us, uh, forgive our sins. So we're going to sing Shiloam with guitars. you've been enjoying a uh, bit of musical uh, items it's great to have some of the younger but also some of the slightly older people and I say that reservedly because I'm in that age category um, great to see them learning new skills and uh, it's great to to have uh, them being let out I think I'd heard a rumor that their name was actually called k-pop <laughs> k-pop sorry pops sorry so yes, if you want to book them, I'm sure they'll do weddings and anything. Yeah, I'm sure they will. But it's, it's great to be able to do that. It's great that we've been able to um, worship in song. 
We now come to a spot where uh, we're going to actually open God's Word and Colin's going to lead us in doing that. But before we do that, if you'd like to bow or, or kneel, whichever is appropriate, um, we'll uh, just invite God's presence with us this morning. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that you uh, said you'd be with us wherever we gather together in your name. We thank you so much for the many blessings that we see here in this country of bountiful food, clothing and places to live. We see the war-torn destruction and things that are happening elsewhere in this world. We ask that um, you lead in God and you help us in the things that we can do to help them. As we give the, come to this time of giving and thinking of your birth, you're coming to give your life for us, to redeem us. We pray now that um, for our members that may not be here, can't make it and not well, we know we live in a world of sin and we know that you have control over that. You can heal and we pray for healing and leading in their lives. We now also pray for Colin as he opens your word. May we focus on your word as he leads and may we understand, be willing to follow and be blessed by the words that you've prepared for us. We ask this all in your wonderful name. Amen. About. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Help. <laughs> Always works in rehearsal. <laughs> Try again. Just flick it again. All right. 
will go without. I had some pictures to uh, keep you entertained, but you'll have to listen to me instead. So, uh, Charlie Brown, what does Christmas mean to you? We've sung um, some songs that have some pretty big words in them. We've uh, sung about the incarnation. We've sung about Emmanuel. Does anyone know what Emmanuel means? Emmanuel, God with us. This morning we're going to, um, we're going to explore humanity in our divine God. The incarnation it just simply means God in human form. And it's not a, not a new thing, or at least it wasn't back in the days where Jesus was born, and it certainly isn't today. You find it in Hinduism, you find it in a lot of the um, other religions, isms, um, and it certainly uh, was in uh, the minds of the people back in Greek culture and Roman culture the gods would come to visit in human form. Um, some of them procreating with humanity to create half-gods or demigods. So it wasn't um, an, an unnormal thing for people to think about. But in the terms of, uh, of Christianity, what does the incarnation mean of the one God? The one God that we believe in, the one God who became man. So we're going to um, cover the first thing um, around biblical prophecy. Now, when we think of prophecy, we've already had uh, one prophecy that's been read to us this morning in the book of Isaiah, but some scholars believe that there are 500 or so Messianic prophecies just in the Old Testament. Some people have even counted um, over 800. Um, we're going to read a few of them this morning. Um, a lot of them are found in the book of Isaiah. And many of them are written by David in the Psalms. Did you know that? Um, but in Isaiah, we have in Isaiah 7, um, 14... Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. And behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And that's where we get the word Emmanuel from, as out of Isaiah, and the prophecy of the virgin birth. Isaiah chapter, six, verse, uh, uh, chapter 9, verse 6, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In Micah, we have a prophecy about where Jesus was born, or to be born. O Bethlehem, Ephratah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be the ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labour has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And then again in Isaiah chapter 53, For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground he had no form or majesty referring to Jesus' humble birth and his life. No beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. So we start in prophecy. And these prophecies were written 700 years before Jesus was born. And we, we often read these texts uh, at Christmas time, and you will hear them at Christmas carol times, as though this was recording what had actually happened. No, this was recording what was to happen. 700 years earlier, Jesus arrived on time. Biblical prophecy proved it. We don't have the time to go into that at the moment, but Jesus' actual date was predicted in Daniel. 
So when we explore humanity and the divine God, what does it actually mean that Jesus was born here, of a virgin, in Bethlehem, <coughs> lowly birth? Matthew chapter 1 has a record of Jesus' birth. Now this was the record of what actually did happen. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place this way, Charlie Brown, when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit, the virgin birth. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as, she, as he considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived is her, in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Luke chapter 2 indicates where Jesus was born, in a manger. And while they were there, the time came... To, for her to give birth and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. When Jesus came into the world he came in the vulnerability of childhood. He was conceived amid whispers of scandal to an unwed mother. His parents searched fruitlessly for a place to stay. The secular power of the day sought his death and compelled his family to flee their home. He was born into this world with all of its threats, all of its insecurities, especially for children and the poor. That was Jesus' birth, that was his beginning. But throughout his life, he was still human. At 12 years of age, we find him in the temple, in the Jerusalem temple, debating with the rabbis. At the beginning of his ministry, when he was around 30 years of age, Jesus was found in the desert, arguing with Lucifer, the fallen angel, and being tempted to exercise his divinity through human desires. The desires of the flesh, the desires of the spirit, the desires of power. These were things that Jesus was tempted with, similar to us, and yet different because he was not only human, he was divine. Then we find him during his ministry on a hillside, teaching the people and providing hope to a people who had been occupied first by the Babylonians, then the Persians, Greeks, and now the Romans, and under religious bondage from the Jewish rabbis, scribes, and Pharisees, giving them hope, telling them what redemption was all about, telling him what the purpose of his mission was. We find him in a boat. At first he was teaching the people because of the crush of the crowds, he had to step into the boat to head into the water where the people couldn't be, just so that people could see him and hear him. But then we find him in his humanity falling asleep in the bottom of the boat, exhausted. We find him on the Mount of Olives, where three of his closest disciples caught just a glimpse of Jesus' glorified divinity. When Jesus met with Moses and Elijah, who were sent down from God to encourage him in his earthly mission. We find him in a garden, where he often sought solitude and communion with his father where he poured out his soul, asking for the weight of human sin to be removed from him. But not your will, but my, but, but not my will, but your will, Father. Putting the will of the Father above himself and the need of humanity above himself. Then we find him on a cross where full separation from the godly trinity occurred because he bore my sin on himself where his focus was not only on the redemption of the human race, but also specifically for the thief hanging alongside of him. And then to his mother, 
knowing he was to die, entrusting her care to his disciple John. Then we find him in a tomb where he experienced the sleep of human death and a complete Sabbath rest that had eluded him for some time during his ministry. We finally see him lifted up in a cloud where after completing his earthly mission, having been resurrected from that tomb, our Lord returned victorious to heaven in his glorified human body to undertake the next phase of his ministry as our high priest, intercessor and king in waiting. So these are the various aspects, the various pictures that we see of God in human form, in the form of Jesus. But why does it matter? Why does it matter that God became human? We had the first prophecy that was right back in Genesis where God said that I will send someone to bruise the serpent's heel. Bruise, cr- bruise, the, bruise your heel, but uh, crush the serpent's head. I beg your pardon. So it matters because Jesus keeps his promises. We have prophecies fulfilled. Jesus came on time. We know he's a God that he can be trusted. Our God, your God, demonstrated that he cares for and empathises with his creation. Number three, God is a personal God. Paul said, when he was talking to uh, those that he was preaching to in Athens, that God is not very far from us. Almost you could reach out and touch him. He's a personal God. Is he a personal God to you? Number four, God proved that his character was indeed love. It was love that held him there on that cross. Proving that he was not only love, but also merciful. Justice and mercy combined that met at the cross. Fifthly, Jesus proved that humanity in its unfallen state before our rebellion could keep God's law perfectly without sin. It was a perfect law and it ruled the universe. It provided the instruction for the universe. It was written on people's hearts. It was written on Adam and Eve's hearts. But as soon as they were tempted and fell, that disappeared. This act vindicated not only that his rules were perfect and able to be kept but it also vindicated his character, his character of love. love. And finally it demonstrates that God has a plan. How often do we look around about us and think everything's gone to hell in a handbasket, there is no plan, there is no future. But we can see through the prophecies. We can see that Jesus came on time. There are prophecies for his return. We know them. We look forward to them. But because of man's rebellion, humanity lost its innocence and therefore its perfection. But not only humanity, we're told that creation groans. And we can see that around about us too. Because of our rebellion, the whole of creation groans. The almighty sovereign God of the universe is in control. He hasn't forgotten us. For those who choose to follow him, he has promised to restore to that original intended perfect state. Perfect bodies, no sin or transgression, perfect characters, no sickness, no disease, no death. There was one thing that was not removed at the time when Adam and Eve fell. And we get a hint of what that was in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, if you want to take that down and read it when you get home. He, 
God has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart. Yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Eternity in your heart. Do you long for eternity? Do you long for that, that uh, perfection? It can be yours. This is God's Christmas gift to you. Your choice. But it requires your acceptance. It requires your repentance. It requires your submission to his will for your life. Will you trust him? Will you follow him this Christmas? Happy birthday, Jesus. And a blessed Christmas to you all from God.
and on my own.
new little baby in our family. Her name's Hope, and she's come to visit us for Christmas today. You can see her later. last song with us this morning, Oh Holy Night. Actually, it's afternoon, isn't it? Oh Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining.
you've enjoyed and been blessed by the words of the songs and the reading from the scriptures. If you'd like to bow your heads, we'll leave with God's blessing. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for your Emmanuel, sending Christ to us to redeem us. Pray as we leave here, may we spread this wonderful news. Should be a reason for the happiest Christmas ever. We ask this all in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen.